Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. This is Falcon Oats, I'm Sakali. Today we're going to be talking about Unit 5 of Human Geography, which was Agriculture. Now, this is going to be a shorter video because we basically learned a couple of terms and then we talked about it over and over again just to get it to stay in our minds. So without further ado, let's get into this really. Agriculture is the science, art, or occupation concerned with cultivating land, raising crops, feeding and breeding, and raising livestock, or farming, which is what it's usually called. Commercial agriculture is uh, agriculture that exists only for making a profit. It's not for feeding your own family, which is subsistence farming, which, or subsistence agriculture, which is producing food for personal or community consumption. Not, It's not meant to be sold anywhere. Intensive agriculture is an agriculture production system characterized by the high inputs of capital, labor, or heavy usage of technologies such as pesticides and chemical fertilizers and rel relative to land area. Extensive agriculture is lots of land use and limited output. Labor intensive agriculture is uh, agriculture that has to do with lots of labor being required to produce a certain sustainable yield. Capital intensive agriculture is um, agriculture that needs a lot of energy, machinery, or storage needed for the sustainable yield. And sustainable yield is the <laughs> sustainable yield that you've heard me talking about is a call it, oh my gosh, ecological yield that can be extracted without reducing the base of capital itself, the surplus required to maintain nature's service at the same or increasing level over time. An example in fisheries, the basic natural capital decreases with extraction, but productivity increases. So the sustainable yield is within the range that the natural capital together with production are able to provide satisfactory yield. Now we have to talk about the agricultural revolutions. These were revolutions that helped agriculture grow into what we know it is today, which is with the machinery and the pesticides and the chemicals that we use today. So the first agricultural revolution is the revolution from hunting and gathering to an agrarian society or um, agriculture and settlement. Hunting and gra gathering was before the agriculture when humans would hunt for their food and would gather resources from bushes and stuff like that. That's how they would eat and stuff. Plant domestication is the deliberate tending of crops to gain certain desired attributes and began around 12,000 years ago uh, along several fertile rivers and river valleys and cultural hearths like Mesopotamia. Animal domestication is domestication of animals for selling or using byproducts. The Fertile Crescent, or Mesopotamia, had cows, horses, pigs, and sheep, and therefore a comparative advantage, advantage over other early cultural hearths. The second ag agricultural revolution is the introduction of technology to agriculture res the resulting in increased yields for commercial sale. So introduction to technology would kind of be like uh, tillers or, you know, like wheelbarrows or seed planters and sprinklers and stuff like that. Crop rotation is the practice of rotating use of different fields to avoid exhausting the soil. It takes up large areas of land because you always have to be in a different spot, but it keeps land uh, usable for future generations. Now the agricultural revolution, oh my gosh, now the third agricultural revolution is the introduction of biological engineering to increase yields for commercial sale and subsistence farmers. Biological engineering means uh, putting together two plants that usually wouldn't, you know, mate together and make a different seed, but they make hybrids that uh, can grow easier and stuff like that. So, uh, part of the third rev agricultural revolution is mechanization, where farmers need tractors, irrigation pumps, and other machinery to make the most effective use of the new miracle seeds. Biotechnology is the using living organisms in a useful way to produce commercial products like pest-resistant crops. Uh, GMOs or genetically 
cloned organisms, genetically modified organisms, are uh, have had their genes altered in a laboratory for specific reasons, like disease resistance or nutritional value or increased productivity. This has to do with biotechnology making it easier or better for consumption. Finally, the Green Revolution is the rapid diffusion of more productive agricultural techniques during the 1970s and 80s, mainly involving higher yield seeds and expanded use of fertilizers. Alright, now we're going to talk about core versus periphery agriculture. The Mediterranean agriculture is found in countries surrounding the Mediterranean Sea. It has developed as a result of the warm, wet winters and hot, dry summers in this area. Cereal crops are sown in the autumn and harvested in late spring. Trees and vines are grown and crops from them, such as grapes and olives, and are collected in the summer for after ripening. In addition, goats and sheep are often kept to provide extra income. Organic agriculture is farming without using GMOs or herbicides and pesticides and growth hormones that was made in the third agricultural revolution. A lot of people prefer agri or organic because there's no pesticides and herbicides in them and you don't want to be eating that obviously so they like organic. Now we move on to the concept of agribusiness. Agribusiness is the businesses collectively associated with the production, processing, and the distribution of agricultural products. Commodity chain is a sequential process used by firms to gather resources, transform them into goods or commodities, and finally distributing them to the consumers. Commodity chains are basically the steps that it, a food takes to get to us. Economic activities, like the primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, and quinary sectors. So primary are concerned with the direct extraction of natural resources from the environment. So this is like agriculture or mining or lumbering or fishing. So this is when like lumberjacks take the trees directly from nature, which is what pr the primary sector does. Secondary is the manufacturing or processing of products, products and assembling raw materials. Tertiary is the service sector, which provides us with transportation, communication, and utilities. Quaternary uh, is concerned with the collection, processing, and manipulation of data and capital. And quinary is, it requires a high level of specialized skill and, te and uh, technical skill and knowledge. This is like scientific research or like finding out new things. Finally, we talk about rural, rural settlements and the von Thunen model. Rural settlements are sparsely settled places away from the influence of large cities. So like villages or hamlets on farms or in other like isolated houses. Dispersed uh, dispersed is characterized by farmers living on individual farms isolated from neighbors rather than alongside other neighbors and the area. And nucleated is a number of families live in close proximity to each other with fields surrounding the collection of houses and farm buildings. So nucleated is basically a village, so everybody lives together and outside of it is farmland. I'll show you guys a picture. So we talk about rural dwellings. So there is unchanged and traditional, which is layout, construction, and appearance have not been significantly out altered by external influences. There's modified traditional, which is new building materials used but no change to the original structure or layout. Modernized traditional is materials and layout have been changed, like multiple jet bathrooms or two-car garages or aluminum siding. And modern sacrifice is traditional for practical and efficiency reflecting advanced technology, comfort, and affluence and suburbanization. Now, building materials could be anything from wood, brick, stone, wattle, grass, and bush. Houses and buildings are typically built from materials that are abundant in the area. Now, we talked about service s survey systems. So, long lots, which is French, is houses erected on narrow lots perpendicular along a river so that each 
original settler had equal river access. Meets and Bounds, which is English, uses physical features of the local geography, along with dis directions and distances, to define the boundary of a particular piece of land. Meets refer to boundary defined by a measurement of a straight run, or bounds refer to a more general boundary, such as a waterway or wall, or public road, or existing building. Township and range, which is the United States, is surveys used in west of Ohio after the purchase of the Louisiana Purchase. So the land is divided into six mile square blocks or townships, which is then divided into one mile square blocks, which is range. Ranges were then broken into smaller parcels to be sold or given to people to develop. So we also get onto the Von Thunen model, which is in the early early in the 19th century, jo Johann Heinrich von Thunen developed a model of land used that showed how market prices could determine how land in different locations would be used. The model generated four concentric circles of agriculture activity. I'll show you guys a picture, but basically this is, he thought that the land would be divided into circles or concentric circles of land, which is not actually what happened, but it was a good example. So other terms of this model, uh, each ring had their own uh, activity. So there's dairying, foresting, horticulture, or cultivation of a garden, orchard, or nursery, truck farming, or a farm producing vegetables for the market, and ranching, which is an extensive farm, especially in the western United States, on which large herds of cattle or sheep or horses are raised. We also talked about slash and burn agriculture, which was, or in other words, Sweden, which where is where they would kill all of their living vegetation and burning it to create fertilizer, which is actually not that bad. As desertification is the rapid depletion of plant life and the loss of topsoil at desert boundaries and in semi-arid regions. It's usually caused by a combination of drought and overexploitation of grasses and other vegetation by people. We talked about a lot of corn in the unit of agriculture. Oh, sorry. So, corn grows really well in the United States, which is why we use it for basically everything in... There are, we've made things like corn starch, corn syrup, and corn because it's easy for us to get and we don't have to transport it from anywhere else. Corn dominates the amount of land that we use for farming. We also use corn to feed animals, which is not good because they actually don't like the... They don't like eating corn by itself. Like, the, they're not used to eating corn. So, why do we eat corn so much? Well, we use it for sweetener so that things taste better and subsequently are more unhealthy. It's just because it's so easy to get that we use it so much. Well, there you have it, guys. That's going to be the end of this episode of Human Geography. Hope you guys did enjoy, or hope you guys did get something out of this. Next is unit six i don't know what it is yet i haven't done any research but hope you guys did enjoy and i will see you guys next time